Configuring and deploying an operating system can take a lot of time and resources. That's why Red Hat Enterprise Linux provides built-in automation to help. My name is Brian Smith, and I'm a product manager at Red Hat. Today I'm going to demo how the network-bound disk encryption client and server rel system roles can help you implement automated unlocking of encrypted volumes using policy-based decryption. RHEL system roles are a collection of supported Ansible roles that help you automate and manage your RHEL environment, ensuring consistent and repeatable configuration. In today's video, I'll be focusing on Network Bound Disk Encryption, or MBDE for short. Network Bound Disk Encryption allows for automated unlocking of Lux encrypted volumes using one or more network servers, referred to as Tang servers. It can be very useful for environments where root volumes are encrypted, which would normally require you to have to manually type the Lux passphrase on the console every time these systems are rebooted. The MBDE server role automates the deployment and configuration of the Tang server. It can also optionally automate Tang key rotation and backing up of Tang keys. This role supports RHEL 8 and RHEL 7 clients. The MBDE client role automates the deployment and configuration of the Clevis client. It can configure existing encrypted volumes to bind to one or more Tang servers. This role also supports RHEL 8 and RHEL 7 clients. The demo environment consists of a RHEL 8 control node named controlnode.example.com, and we have a total of five managed nodes, two RHEL 8 hosts, two RHEL 7 hosts, and a Tang host that is also running RHEL 8. The two RHEL 8 managed nodes and the two RHEL 7 managed nodes have encrypted root volumes, and currently, each time they are rebooted, someone must manually connect to the console and type the Lux password before they will continue booting. My desired MBDE configuration for the environment is having Tang installed and configured on the Tang 1 host. I would also like to have the Clevis client installed and configured on the two RHEL 8 and two RHEL 7 managed nodes. And finally, I'd like these four hosts to connect to the Tang 1 server to unlock the root volumes so that they can boot up without manual user intervention. Now that we've outlined the demo environment and our desired configuration, let's get into the demo. I'm logged into my RHEL 8 control node, where I have previously installed the RHEL system roles RPM and the Ansible engine RPM. I've also set up a service account named Ansible on the control node and manage nodes that I'll use. For more information on these steps, refer to the Introduction to RHEL System Roles blog post that is linked in the video description. Each role has a readme file that outlines the role variables that can be used. I'll start by looking at the readme file for the MBDE server role, which is available at user share doc rel system roles mbde server readme.md. It shows the variables that can be used with the role as well as some examples at the bottom. I'll also show the readme for the MBDE client role, which is available at user share doc rel system roles mbde client readme.md. It shows that the MBDE client bindings dictionary variable can be defined with a list of keys that control the implementation of the MBDE client. And we'll utilize these later on in the demo, including the device, encryption password, and server keys. In addition, some examples are shown at the bottom of the readme file as well. Okay, within the MBDE directory, we'll start by taking a look at the inventory.yaml file. Here I have my five hosts in my demo environment listed. The two rel8 servers and the two rel7 servers are in the MBDE client's inventory group and the Tang1 host is in the MBDE servers inventory group. Within the group vars directory, I have an MBDE clients.yaml file that defines the Ansible variables for the MBDE clients inventory group. Within this file, I have the MBDE client binding dictionary variable, including several keys. The device key points to the existing Lux encrypted device that should be used. The encryption password key is the current Lux password, which in this case I've encrypted with Ansible Vault. And finally, we have the server's key, which specifies a list of Tang servers that the client should attempt to connect to. In this example, we're using a single Tang server, tang1.example.com. Next, we'll take a look at the mbde.yaml playbook file. The first task, open firewall for Tang, runs on the mbde servers group, which contains just the Tang1 server. This task will open TCP port 80 in the firewall, which is necessary for the Clevis clients to connect to the Tang server. The second task, deploy MBDE Tang servers, also runs on the NDBE servers inventory group, which contains just the Tang1 server. This task calls the MBDE server system role, which will install and configure the Tang server. The third task, create etsy drawcut.conf.d mbde client.conf, runs on hosts in the MBDE clients group, which contains the four RHEL 8 and 7 clients. 
This task is needed due to recent rel8 changes related to Clevis and its drawcut modules. And the final task, deploy MBDE Clevis clients, which also runs on hosts in the MBDE clients group, which again contains the four rel8 and rel7 clients, will call the MBDE client system role, which will install and configure the Clevis clients, utilizing the role variables we previously defined in the MBDE clients.yaml file under the group vars directory. Okay, next I'll go ahead and run the mbde.yaml playbook using the ansible playbook command. I'll specify the minus b argument to indicate that ansible should escalate privileges, and also specify the minus i argument to point to my inventory file, which is inventory.yaml. I'll also include the ask vault pass argument so that I am prompted for the password to decrypt the encryption underscore password variable, which was previously encrypted with ansible vault. I'll be prompted to type that vault password and then the playbook will start running. I'll go ahead and pause the video here and come back once the playbook has completed. Okay, the playbook successfully completed. I'll run the clevis lux list command on the dev VDA2 device on rel8 server one. The output shows that clevis was correctly bound to the dev VDA2 device and our tang1.example.com server is correctly listed. To validate that the Tang server is active, I'll run the systemctl status tangd.socket command on the Tang1 server, and this shows that the socket is active. And as a final test, I'll go ahead and reboot the rel8 server1 host and validate that it boots up without requiring me to type in the lux passphrase. Once the system starts booting, we will eventually get to the screen that prompts for the lux passphrase, and the system will pause here for several seconds. In the background, the system is attempting to initiate a connection to the Tang1 server. The system will then continue to boot automatically. Before we had set up network bound disk encryption, the system would have stayed on the Lux passphrase prompt here indefinitely until someone had connected to the console and typed the Lux passphrase. But now that we have MBDE set up, the system booted automatically without any user intervention. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Red Hat Enterprise Linux, start your free trial at redhat.com slash try rel.